Okay. Water is flowing into and out of a small reservoir. The total amount of water can be modeled by R of T is equal to 20 minus 15 times sine of T squared divided by 25 cubic feet. T is measured in hours, and T is between 0 and 8. For part A, what is the average rate of change of R over the interval from 0 to 8 indicate the units of measure? So, for part A, the average rate of change, that's just going to be the slope between two points. So, if you remember, slope is equal to the change in your y divided by the change in your x. And it's typically written as y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. But in the case for our problem here, this can be r2 minus r1 divided by t2 minus t1, where r2 is going to be r with 8 plugged in, and r1 is going to be r with 0 plugged in for t. And t2 is going to be 8, and t1 is going to be 0. So now let's figure out r of 8 and r of 0. For r of 8, this is 20 minus 15 times sine of t squared. So uh, 8 squared is 64 divided by 25. And then I went ahead and put this into my calculator. And this comes out to be 11.7597. I wasn't sure how many decimal places you needed. And then our units on this is cubic feet. Now let's do the same, but plugging in 0 for t. That's 20 minus 15 times sine. Now, t squared, or 0 squared, is going to be 0. And divided by 25 is still 0. And sine of 0 is 0. So this whole thing goes away. And we're just left with 20 cubic feet. So the average rate of change for part A, we are going to do R of 8, so 11.7597 cubic feet minus 20 cubic feet divided by 8 minus 0, which is just 8, and that's in hours. And I already did this in my calculator, and this comes out to be negative 1 cubic feet per hour. Okay, let's go to part B. Find the value of r prime of t using correct units. Interpret the meaning of the value in the context of the problem. So we're just going to need to find the derivative of our function here. So taking the derivative of all the parts. First, the derivative of 20, which is 0. So I'm not going to write that. And then this next part, negative 15 times the sine of this stuff inside. I can bring the negative 15 out to the front because it is multiplied to our function in question. And then let's start to do the chain rule. We have to do the chain rule because there's a function, this t squared divided by 25, inside of another function, our sine. So let's start with the derivative of the outside function. The derivative of sine is cosine. And let's keep the inside the same. So t squared divided by 25. And then now we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So I can take the 1 over 25 to the front. And then take the derivative of t squared, which is 2t. So let me go ahead and multiply everything. I have a negative 15 times a 2t. So that's negative 30t divided by 25 from here times cosine of t squared divided by 25. And finally, negative 30 and 25, or just 30 and 25, these are both divisible by 5. So I can simplify this fraction. 
would be negative 6 over 5 times t times cosine of t squared divided by 25. And the units on this will be cubic feet per hour, the same units as part A. And the um, inter practical interpretation of this would be the rate at which the amount of water in the tank is changing. Well, I guess in this problem, they don't call it a tank, they call it a reservoir, but same thing. Let me just separate A and then B. Okay, for part C, find all the times for T, or find all times T for which the rate at which the amount of water in the reservoir is changing is equal to the average rate of change of R over the interval. So basically what they're saying is we're going to take our answer from part B, set it to the answer of part A, and find a T that will fit. So we're going to write negative 6 over 5 T cosine of T squared divided by 25. And we're going to set that equal to negative 1. So I had a hard time doing this um, without doing it graphically. So I was able to solve it graphically. So let me see if I can do that right now. Okay, we're going to graph negative. divided by 5. Oh, wait a second. Uh, times. I wonder if it'll do t. I'm just going to use x to be safe. x times cosine uh, x squared divided by 25. And we're going to plot this. And so this is what the derivative of the function looks like. And so let's go ahead and plot f of x is equal to negative 1. Let's see where these intersect. So it's hard to tell exactly where these are intersecting from this graph. So let me go ahead and add this graph to the board. And what I was able to get is that t right here is equal to 0 0.834 hours and right here, it was equal to 5.981 hours. I'm not sure how your teacher or professor wants this, or if you're even allowed to graph it, but this is one solution that works. Okay, then let's move on to part D. The reservoir can hold a maximum of 30 cubic feet of water. At what time after T equals 8 hours will the reservoir reach its capacity? So for this one, what I did is 20 minus 15 sine t squared divided by 25 is equal to, so we're going to set this equal to 30, our original equation. And then we want to find a t that would satisfy this equation. So the first thing I did, subtract 20 from both sides, I get negative 15 sine of t squared over 25 
equals 10, divide both sides by negative 15, so I get sine t squared divided by 25 equals negative 2 over 3. Now normally I would take the arc sign on both sides to get rid of the sign and then solve for t algebraically. However, that gave me non-real answers. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to go ahead and graph it. Let me add a graph here. So I'm going to plot a function, our original function of 20 minus 15 sine squared divided by 25. And that should be up here. Yep. And I'm also going to plot f of x is equal to 30. So that way we can see where they intersect. So they'll intersect after 8 hours at here. I mean, I guess I can't zoom out anymore. I'll add this graph to the board. And so I did this on Desmos, and Desmos helps a lot to do graphing and finding out where things intersect if you don't have a graphing calculator. But I found out that the T for this is 9.838 hours. And I guess the question asks, what time after T equals 8 hours? They might want you to subtract 8 hours from this and then get a difference of 1.83 hours. This is the time after eight hours that it happens, but uh, talk to your teacher or your professor and make sure that we got the correct answers here.